The goal of today's video is very simple. I want to take one of the animations that I've already created before, but then add in another layer of spice, making it much more sci-fi to fit better for tech video backgrounds. I have no idea what the final outcome is going to be because I'm going to be creating it for the first time while recording this video. I will go step by step and explain exactly what I'm thinking while I'm creating each and every step of the way. So with that, let's actually go ahead and begin this particular video. In our default scene, we'll go ahead and bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows click and drag to create a new window and change this from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then we'll press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree, after which we're gonna go ahead and delete the group input. Now, the reason I want to do that is because I want a grid of points, which I'll be displacing using some noise. So let's press shift A and search for a grid node and simply plug this into the group output. Now I want this to be much larger. So I'll just switch over to the wireframe view and I'll increase the size to maybe 10 units on both the X and the Y. And I'll increase the vertices all the way to 100 on both the X and the Y. Y. Now I need to actually create some sort of displacement. So let's press shift A and search for a set position node. Now I want to displace this with some noise. So let's press shift A and search for a noise texture. But since I do want it to loop, I'm going to use my looping noise texture. If you want to learn how to create this, you can go ahead and watch this video right here where I do it for the shader editor. I will be creating one more for the geometry node editor as well, which will be out very soon. So stay tuned for that. For now, let's go ahead and plug this color into the offset. And for the vector, we'll go ahead and search for a position node plug this in just like that to make it work. Now I don't want it to be lifted up and to the right. So I'll change this offset to 0.5 and that just brings it back down. Now I'll change the noise scale down to maybe something very low. So I think 0.4 is good enough, but I'll increase the displacement from one to maybe two so that it's a lot more displaced. I also think I want this grid to be even denser. So I'll change the number of vertices to 200 on both the X and the Y. Now I want this to loop every 300 frames so that it's a five second long animation at 60 frames per second. And the max W for now, I'll keep it at maybe 0.5. I'll change the playback from play every frame to frame dropping and let's actually see how the animation is and I think this is maybe a bit too slow for my liking so I might have to go ahead and increase the max w from 0.5 to maybe a value of 2 and now if we go ahead and play the animation this is what we get and I think this is enough of a motion for my liking let's go ahead and actually change the frame rate to 60 frames per second and then see what it looks like now it's a bit too fast we'll change the max w to 1 and I think that looks absolutely perfect it's perfectly looping and it works well enough now let's go ahead and instant some points on all of these vertices. For that, we'll switch back to solid mode. We'll search for an instance on points node and plug that in after the set position. For the instance, we're just going to use a simple icosphere, but we're going to keep the radius very, very small. So let's reduce this down to maybe 0.1 and the subdivisions we can keep at two, but we need it to be shaded smooth. So let's search for a set shade smooth node and then plug the mesh into the geometry and take this output and plug it into the instance. Now, clearly 0.1 meters of the radius is still too large. So let's reduce it even more 0.001. That's too small. So maybe we'll just keep it at 0.01 meters. Now for each of these points, I want there to be a random value associated with it, which I can use to actually light them up. So to do that, I'm going to actually capture or store a named attribute. So let's search for a store named attribute, plug that in right here. And I want to store a floating point number for every single point. But remember each of these points we've already converted to instances. So we'll change this from point to instance and I'll name this random value. The actual value value can be a normal random value. That's not too much of an issue. But the problem is that I want this random value to change over time and I want it to loop after 300 frames. So I can simply keyframe the seed value or to make it automated, I'll go ahead and use a scene time node and I'll make it loop every five seconds. So I'll press shift A, search for a math node. I'll change it to modulus right over here so that we get the remainder after division. I'll plug the seconds in over here and I'll change the value to maybe five itself so that it loops every five seconds. Let's just plug this into the seed and see what happens. But to actually visualize it, I'll have to be in my shader editor and actually apply the material. So let's go ahead and set the material. Let's shift this to the side, press shift A, search for a set material node, plug that in right here. And we'll just choose the default material because we're not using that for anything else. Now, since I want to play around with this as well, I'll keep this window open. I'll tap N to remove that side panel and I'll click and drag to create a new window. Now I'll switch this over to the shader editor. And since this is the default cube, the default material will be attached to it. If it's not, you can always come over to the side and select the material from here. Now I want the base color to be some sort of a dark color for all of them. So we'll keep it maybe a dark bluish color like this. But to actually see these changes, we have to switch our viewport shading to rendered. And in my render properties, I'm actually going 
going to switch on bloom and screen space reflections and the world background i'm actually going to darken a bit more and make it a nice bluish color just like that for the time being i'll go ahead and disable the light as well so that i just see the points now let's use that random value that we were capturing over here and to use it we're going to search for an attribute node and remember this is storing it for every instance so we change this from geometry to instancer the name is rand value and I'm going to use the color to drive the emission. So I'll search for a color ramp so that I can make it such that only a very few of them actually light up. Let's in right here, change this from linear to constant and just bring this back by a bit. Let's say I want 10% of them to be lit. I'll make it 0.9 and now I can plug this into the emission to see which of these light up. Now that's all right. If I start playing the animation, they just change very abruptly and randomly and I'm not really liking it. So I have to figure out how to make this a smoother motion. Instead of using a random value, maybe I can use another looping noise texture. Let's delete this and let's just duplicate this looping noise node. Press Shift D to duplicate it. Again, I need a position node for the vector. So let's press Shift A, search for a position node. Let's plug that into the vector and let's change this random seat to something else. And now we can just plug this into the value and see what we get. And everything is still black. That's because again, the output of this looping noise is very close to 0.5. So we'll have to drag this in a lot more to actually see some of them light up, or at least that's what I suspect. And yeah, you can see as we bring it very close to this side, we have a few of them lighting up, but clearly the scale of this noise texture is way too small. Let's increase this noise scale from 0.4 to maybe 10. And now it looks a lot more random. Let's just reduce the number of points that are lit. I'll increase the detail to five, scale maybe 20. And now we just have a few scattered lit points that should be changing over time. Just to allow for the playback to be faster, I'll change the vertices from 200 down to 50 and the subdivisions down to one as well. Now let's just play this animation. Clearly they're moving way too fast. So let's change this max W down to maybe 0.1. And I think that looks a lot better. When I increase the number of points, I think it might be a bit faster. So I'll maybe keep it at a value of 0.05. And then I'll go ahead and just increase the number of vertices back to 200. And let's make a few of these disappear. Just about that many. So now that we have this set, we can go ahead and change this color from white to something more blue. And then just to increase the amount of bloom will increase the emission strength all the way to maybe 100. Now I do feel like they need to be clamped down so let's go to our output properties and clamp down the bloom at maybe something like five. Next, I do think that I want some light in the center. So I'll just switch my light back on. I'll press Alt G to clear its location and the light wasn't selected. So let's just select the light again, press Alt G and then press GZ just to lift it up a bit. Now I think I'd like to place my camera. So let's select the camera again, press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, followed by RX 90 to rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees. Then I'll press zero to go into my camera view and I'll just press GZ to lift it up, followed by GY to move my camera back. And then I'll press GZ to lift it up again, GY, and finally some RX to rotate it on the x-axis so that it points down just like that. Next, with my camera selected, I'll go to the camera properties. I'll go to viewport display and increase pass power two all the way to one so that I don't see anything outside the camera view. Then I'll just switch on depth of field and I'll decrease the f-stop from 2.8 down to maybe one so that we get a lot more blurring occurring. Then I'll just play around with this focus distance until we have roughly the middle region in focus. So maybe a focus distance of five meters is good enough so that I have this region in focus and everything towards the beginning and the edges are blurred out. Now I'm going to select my light and just press GY to bring it more towards my focus region. I'll reduce the power to maybe 100 watts. And I think that's actually all there is to create this animation. All I have to do now is press render animation. But before I do that, I'm going to make sure that in my output properties, I choose the correct output folder wherever I want to store my blend file. File format, I'm going to choose FFmpeg video. I'm going to change the encoding from Matroska to MPEG4 with an output quality set to perceptually lossless. Apart from that, in my render properties, I'm going to actually go all the way down to color management and under color management, I'm going to give it a high contrast look just to make this a lot more sci-fi. With that, I might try checking if the light color can be changed to a slightly more bluish color. And I think that's good enough. Once I'm happy with the way everything looks, I'll go ahead and press render animation. I know this was a very simple one, but I think this is a video that was necessary to be made to slowly upgrade what we've already done in previous videos. The next couple of videos might be a little simpler like this because I'm trying to upload multiple videos in advance. So I'm creating many videos per day. There is one thing that I did want to ask all of you, which is, would you be interested in demystifying concepts that go beyond Blender? One of my best performing series are the demystifying nodes series, where I demystify different nodes like the vector math node, the light path node, the noise texture. And I talk about maybe the algorithms that go on behind 
creating those textures. I do plan on creating many more of those videos, but before I get into that, would you be interested in watching other videos where I demystify concepts that may not be directly linked to Blender? For example, I'm currently conducting a couple of guest lectures in various universities where I demystify Fourier transforms. Now, Fourier transforms and Laplace transforms are used everywhere in engineering. However, the Fourier transform is used exclusively for all of your audio signals and audio processing. Without Fourier transforms, you wouldn't be able to compress videos the way we do at the moment. And it's actually a very fundamental concept in math. As I use Blender to actually explain it visually to various college students, I do wonder if all of you would be interested in watching a video on those as well. Let me know down below if I should create videos on topics like that or whether I should just stick to Blender 3D concepts. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. And if you like this content, definitely check out other videos on my channel because I post videos every single day. So there's definitely something or the other that's just waiting for you to discover them. Until my next video comes out tomorrow, keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.